Welcome to Catholic News World. Welcome to Catholic News World. Please subscribe to our channel. My name is Steph. Here are this week's breaking news headlines. An art detective discovered the stolen historic reliquary containing blood of Jesus that was collected in the Holy Grail at Calvary. In early June, a reliquary of the precious blood of Christ was stolen from the Abbey of the Holy Trinity in Fécamp, France. The reliquary was later found by Arthur Brand, a Dutch detective specializing in works of art, apparently the thieves thought they were cursed. We feared that it would never appear, said Monsignor Bernin, the Bishop of Le Havre. In the announcement that the relic of the precious blood, was stolen from Fécamp, Seine Maritime, Bishop Jean-Luc Bernin, was saddened. This theft occurs a few days before the feast where the relic is venerated by the population of Fécamp. By strongly condemning this act of vandalism, I want to assure the Fécampoises and Fécampoises of my closeness and my deep sympathy. The precious blood is an ancient faith tradition dating from the 12th century. This theft is an unbearable attack on the faith of all people who remember the salvation obtained by the sacrifice of Christ. It was found in Amsterdam, Netherlands, in early July. The Bishop of Le Havre exclaimed, I was surprised, like many, by this announcement that the relic of the precious blood had been found. We feared it was gone forever. The theft occurred without breaking and entering, then all of a sudden it reappeared on the doorstep of Arthur Brand. Arthur Brand explained, this person was approaching me on behalf of another, at whose home the stolen relics were being stored, Brand told France 24. To have the ultimate relic, the blood of Jesus in your home stolen that's a curse, he explained. When they realized what it was, that you in fact cannot sell it, they knew they had to get rid of it. The U.S. Bishop's pro-life chairman says the majority in the House of Representatives voted last Friday to pass the most unjust and extreme abortion-on-demand bill our nation has ever seen. The U.S. House of Representatives passed the Women's Health Protection Act, by a vote of 219 to 210. This bill would impose abortion on demand nationwide at any stage of pregnancy and would eliminate pro-life laws at every level of government, including parental notification for minor girls, informed consent, and health and safety protection specific to abortion facilities. H.R. 8296 also would compel all Americans to support abortions here and abroad with their tax dollars and would likely force healthcare providers and professionals to perform, assist in, and or refer for abortion against their deeply held beliefs, as well as force employers and insurers to cover or pay for abortion. Archbishop William Laurie of Baltimore, Chairman of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops Committee on Pro-Life Activities and Cardinal Timothy M. Dolan of New York, Chairman of the USCCB's Committee for Religious Liberty, issued the following statement. The majority in the House of Representatives voted last Friday to pass the most unjust and extreme abortion-on-demand bill our nation has ever seen. Answering the needs of women by promoting taxpayer-funded elective abortion, as this bill would do, is a grave evil and a failure to love and serve women. Offering free or low-cost abortions, instead of increasing the resources women need to care for themselves and their children, is not choice but coercion and callous abandonment. Simply repeating the mantra that abortion is healthcare doesn't make it so. Deliberately ending the lives of defenseless and voiceless human beings is the antithesis of healthcare. We implore those who see abortion as a legitimate solution to the needs of women to abandon this path of death and despair. Instead, we invite all to join us in pursuing a vision we presented in Standing with Moms in Need, a vision that upholds the truth that every human life is sacred and inviolable, a society in which the legal protection of human life is accompanied by profound care for mothers and their children. We exhort our nation to prioritize the well-being of women, children, and families with both material resources and personal accompaniment so that no woman ever feels forced to choose between her future and the life of her child. Another Catholic priest has been killed by terrorists in Kaduna State, while his fellow priest escaped in Nigeria, Africa. Father John Mark Chaitnam, age 44, who was abducted last on July 15 with his colleague was found dead. A statement on Tuesday by the Chancellor, Catholic Diocese of Kofan Chan, Father Emmanuel Uchechukwu Okolo, confirmed the death, stating that the remains of the priest were discovered. 
The statement reads, sequel to the announcement of the two kidnapped priests from our diocese, it is with a deep sense of sorrow and pains that the bishop, clergy, religious and laity of the Diocese of Kafan Chan announced the gruesome murder of very Reverend Father John Mark Chaitnam. According to reports he was well liked and always smiling. However, we wish to announce that Reverend Father Donatus Cleopas escaped from his abductors and has been reunited with us. Father John Mark who was abducted from the rectory of Christ the King Parish Yadin Garu, Lara LGA of Kaduna State, was brutally killed by his abductors on the same day of his abduction, Friday the 15th of July 2022. His corpse was later discovered already decomposing on Tuesday the 19th of July 2022. Until his demise, he was the Christian Association of Nigeria Chairman. He was the Dean of Khoi Deanery, Director of Communications in the Diocese of Kofan Chan and the Priest of St. James Parish Fori, Jama LGA Kaduna State His burial was Thursday, the 21st of July 2022 at the Cathedral of St. Peter Kofan Chan, Kaduna State. Pope Francis made an historic appointment of three women to the Vatican's dicastery for bishops, Sister Raffaella Petrini, Secretary General of the Governorate of the Vatican City State, Sister Yvonne Riongot, former Superior General of the Daughters of Mary Help of Christians, and Dr. Maria Lea Zervino, President of the World Union of Catholic Women's Organizations. Vatican News announced that Pope Francis, on July 13, 2022, named three women to the dicastery for bishops. This is the first time women have been appointed to the dicastery, responsible for choosing future bishops worldwide. The Holy See Press Office released a statement with the Holy Father's new appointments of two nuns and a lay woman. The nomination of Dr. Zervino also marks the first appointment ever of a lay woman to the Vatican dicastery. Watch our program every Friday at 7.30 p.m. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Catholic News World Channel. God bless. Please subscribe to Catholic News World's YouTube channel. Thanks and God bless.